let's paint some hills. In the last video, I showed you how to carve hills for your holiday villages, Halloween, Christmas, whatever. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint them. You can use this same technique whether you're doing a spooky haunted hill for your Halloween village or some sort of mountain or woodland area for your Christmas village. It's all the same colors, all the same paints. Again, this is just the way that I paint my hills. You feel free to use any other colors or techniques that you want. I just want to give you an idea for how I get this look. So here's the base that we carved in the last video and you can see that I've already gone ahead and painted it all black. And for this, I just used standard uh, latex house paint that I got from Home Depot. I just have a gallon can of it in black, and I use that to just paint the whole thing in black to give it a nice, good base to start with. You can see here that there's a couple of little spots of pink foam still showing through, but that's okay. We can cover that up as we're going along. And for the rest of this, I'm just going to use craft paint that I believe I bought this from Walmart. Um, you're going to want a dark brown color, I'm using burnt umber, a medium gray color, and a light gray color. You're also going to want a sheet of scrap cardboard and a medium sized paintbrush. So the first thing that I'm going to do is lay down a coat of this dark brown and use this as a base to show that there's a little bit of dirt and mud and ground underneath the rocks to give it a little bit more dimension so it's not just straight gray um, and so this what you're going to want to do is get some paint on your brush you see there it's very wet but then you're going to wipe off a lot of that paint this isn't this is called uh, over brushing it's not really dry brushing you don't want to get all of the paint off because this is going to be a heavy coat of paint um, but you don't want it to be super you know wet and thick on your brush so you want to get most of it off and then what we're going to do is just go around and you can just kind of start laying it on um, you can use a kind of a dabbing motion to kind of get it into the crevices um, you, can, you can brush it on like this but you just kind of want to cover the entire surface you don't want as, I'm, as you can see here I'm, I'm leaving some of the black showing through you want some of the black to show through you're not totally painting the whole thing that's why we wipe off a lot of the paint um, but you just want to get a good coverage and like I said before try to just get into the the crevices and the, the cracks and things like that this is going to be again just to give the gray paint a little more dimension um, even though we're going to give the idea of stone cliffs with this, in nature, everything's not stark gray all the time. Put a little bit more paint on my brush and get back at it. This is a bit of a messy process, so you can wear gloves if you want, but I just you know, kind of go for it. There's a nice little crevice that I want to get into there and there you go you can see like I said I let some of the black show through you don't want to totally cover everything up but we're giving it a good base uh, brown dimension under that gray and now we're just gonna let this dry for a few minutes really uh, before we start adding the gray it doesn't have to be totally dry um, but you don't want it to be wet Okay, now it's time to start adding the gray. Like I said before, this is kind of a medium gray tone. And you could use the same brush. You could also get a different brush. Um, I have a different brush here. If you use the same brush and the paint dries on there a little bit, it's okay because this layer is gonna, everything's gonna kind of mix together anyway. For this, I wanna get even more of the paint off of the brush. Um, so we're gonna, it's, this one's still gonna be a heavy coat, but it's gonna be a little lighter than the brown and we don't want to leave brush strokes. And so, as you can see here, I've let the brown dry, mostly dry, there's still a little bit of wet paint here, and it's not fully cured, but that's okay, because if things kind of blend together, it just kind of enhances the natural look. Um, and so this is gonna be more of a dry brushing, which is you get most of the paint off of your brush, and then you're gonna just hit the high edges of everything. With the brown, we wanted to get more into the cracks and crevices. This one, we wanna stay on top, like the top edges of the rocks. As you can see, they're kind of catching, just catching the top of the, bro the rocks. 
just lightly brush on top. That's what dry brushing is. This, we're gonna go a little heavier, as you'll see as I go in here. I'm gonna kinda give it a little bit more oomph. And here, look, there, I got some brush strokes on there and you want to avoid that as much as possible. We can blend that back in, but that's why you wanna get a lot of paint off of your brush. Um, you don't want those brush strokes, so you can kinda blend it in there, especially at this stage where the, the brown and the gray are kind of blending in together anyway. It's a little easier to hide those mistakes. But you can go across, you can go up and down. Oops, sorry, get the camera there. Whatever works for you. As the brush gets drier, there's less paint on the brush, this effect kind of starts to get a little better. So that's why, again, get most of that paint off of your brush. Now I'm just going back around trying to clean things up a little bit, see if I missed anything. There's the finished piece. As you can tell, hopefully you can tell through the camera here, there's, you can still see a little bit of that brown underneath but it's mostly gray now. Looks like a rock. Rocks aren't always just totally gray. And this time you're gonna wanna let this dry even longer than you did last time. Last time I, with between the brown and the first layer of gray, I let it dry for about five minutes. This time I'm gonna let this dry for 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. Um, Cause for the next layer with the very light gray highlights, we don't want this to be wet. We don't want that to blend at all. We want the highlights to really pop. Now here's where this project's really gonna start coming to life. We're gonna use a very light gray to get just the highest edges on these cliffs and really make them pop out. And for this, we use a paper towel for the dry brushing here um, just to make sure that this brush gets really, really, really dry. So put some paint on here, not that much paint. And I'm just gonna wipe most of that right off. So you can tell there's a little paint on there. See, a little bit, but even, I wanna get even more off. You're just really hitting a light coat with this. Let's test it. See, I caught some of those high peaks there. And it's just, we're just gonna highlight the highest edges. And you don't want any wet paint on your brush because you don't wanna, you wanna try to avoid, well, a little bit of brush stroke there. Um, try to avoid it if at all possible. Again, if your brush is super dry, you will mostly avoid that. And this just takes patience. Um, you can really get this, most of your paint off of here and go over this a couple of times um, to really be safe. But you know, for the most part, this is looking pretty awesome. It just, yeah, it just gives your cliffs more definition. It's not a totally natural look. It's stylized realism, but you can see the whole way through we have this first brown layer that we added in, then some of the darker grays, and then this highlight layer just brings the whole thing together. I only loaded my brush once this whole time. I've just been using it really, really dry. I can't stress that enough. That's why it's called dry brushing. I think it looks pretty cool. You can even see some of the, the deepest black in here, the brown, the grays and your highlight and that's it we're done that's the finished product well i hope you learned something new about painting your holiday villages if you have any questions about any of the techniques that i used in this video then please let me know throw a comment down there if you enjoyed the video then please give me a like and subscribe because i'll be doing more of these in the future if you have any suggestions for future videos then please let me know that as well and until next time thanks for watching